Make sure you drink it with a straw, bypass any staining ability, and otherwise go with the capsules. Because honestly, there's absolutely no reason to take the powdered form of methylene blue when the capsules are readily available at 3 milligrams, 5 milligrams, or 10 milligram increments. Unfortunately, I couldn't really find any direct scientific evidence that methylene blue improves athletic performance, increases endurance, stamina, strength, or overall exercise capacity. That's a little bit of an extrapolation from the benefits of mitochondrial function and ATP synthesis. There's no documentation regarding beneficial effects on fat loss or overall weight loss. But hey, methylene blue is found in the urine samples of athletes which are subject to drug testing, and it's not recognized as a masking agent. So let's assume athletes are using methylene blue to improve their physical and mental performance during competitions. There are several studies that show that methylene blue enhances cognition, albeit mostly in Alzheimer patients, uh, but the dosages used are generally not the dosages that I would recommend because the dosages are in the range where side effects already start to manifest, which I highlighted earlier at the start and in the middle of this deep dive. Still, this study is pretty interesting to read. Performed by Rodriguez et al. published on June 2017, methylene blue modulates functional connectivity in the human brain. In this study, 28 healthy subjects between the age of 18 to 65 years old received 280 milligrams methylene blue, comparable to 4 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight. Again, dosage ranges where a boatload of side effects start to occur, particularly vasoconstriction and then some. Uh, to assess the effects of methylene blue on the functional connectivity of the human brain using functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, as a diagnostic tool at baseline and 60 minutes after methylene blue administration. Uh, without getting too technical, in the discussion, the researchers say that low-dose methylene blue, 280 milligrams methylene blue is considered a low-dose, um, increased visual motor task-induced deactivation of a task-related network and increased functional connectivity amongst regions associated with working memory, visual and motor coordination. But they also found a significant decrease in cerebral blood flow, like I mentioned earlier, after low dose methylene blue in clusters located in the posterior circulate cortex, prefrontal cortex and inferior parietal lobes associated with the visual motor tasks of the study. So too long didn't read a reasonably high dose of methylene blue, what the researchers consider to be a low dose methylene blue. 280 milligrams methylene blue improves memory recollection, working memory and visual and motor coordination, but it can impair cerebral blood flow. And this is not what we're after if you want to have a nootropic effect. And if the beneficial effects on functional brain activity are observed at lower and conservative dosages, 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, 25 milligrams even, it seems that that's never been investigated in the studies uh, beyond alleviating symptoms of depression and anxiety. Um, so again, if you want to say that methylene blue improves cognition, go with anecdotal reports, not really with the scientific evidence, because let's be honest, we're not going to take these dosages and we don't suffer from Alzheimer's disease. And a lot more studies need to be performed uh, regarding its potential benefits at three milligram to 10 milligram dosage ranges. Uh, but those haven't been performed. And the next study is a little bit more comprehensive regarding neurological function under the influence of methylene blue, performed by Rojas et al., published on January 2012, a little bit older than the previous one, titled Neurometabolic Mechanisms for Memory Enhancement and Neuroprotection of Methylene Blue. This study goes through all scientific evidence showing that methylene blue could potentially be used as a memory-enhancing drug, but the index studies are all animal models and mostly use interperitoneal injections that are straight into the abdomen, and only one study used oral administrations of methylene blue. Still, the results of these studies proving memory-enhancing effects in these animal models is very promising, so I did a dose conversion to get the human equivalent dosage where these benefits are already observed. In the animal models, the effective dosages are anywhere between 1 milligram to 4 milligram per 1 kilogram of body weight, which is approximately 0.08 milligrams to 0.65 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight in humans, meaning that a 100 kilogram bodybuilder should already get memory enhancing effects from methylene blue at a single serving dosage between 8.1 milligram to 64.9 milligrams. So let's keep the dosage moderate. For me, I would say that the nootropic 
benefits are already observed at five milligrams and around 100 kilos. And at 10 milligrams, I seem to be a little bit more cognitively enhanced. Unfortunately, that dosage is based on interperitoneal administrations, not oral administrations. The effective oral administration dose was nine milligrams to 30 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight. And if you convert that to the human equivalent dose, that would be 0.7 milligrams to 2.4 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight orally, meaning that a 100 kilogram bodybuilder would need anywhere between 73 to 243.2 milligrams oral methylene blue to get a potential beneficial effect regarding cognition, memory formation, and memory recollection. Uh, again, those dosages are way too high. Those I would consider to be the side effect inducing dosage ranges. Now, there's a lot more to the study, and I would highly suggest you to give it a read if you're interested in the potential nootropic benefits of methylene blue. As always, the citations are down below. In the conclusion, the researchers mentioned that all the quoted studies provide conclusive evidence that low dosages of pharmaceutical USP-grade methylene blue are effective for improving different forms of memory and preventing various neurochemical, structural, and functional deficits derived from mitochondrial inhibition and oxidative stress. So again, most of the nootropic benefits are coming from the improvement in mitochondrial function, um, even though it might impair blood flow, again, if the dosages are a little bit higher. Further studies could prove that methylene blue has neuroprotective effects in neurodegradation and amnesia and might be effective as a nootropic agent. Methylene blue could be used to enhance memory and prevent aging-related and disease-related memory loss, especially in conditions associated with mitochondrial dysfunction in humans. Yeah, very interesting reads. It's linked down below in case you're interested. Since there's little scientific evidence on truly low-dose methylene blue administrations, dosages which are significantly lower, what the researchers consider to be low and effective dosages, um, I'm just going to play it by ear and go with the anecdotal reports of the nootropic space and the fitness community, because uh, most of the people in the nootropics community and the fitness community don't really experience the side effects which are commonly associated with methylene blue. Again, with methylene blue, less is more, especially if you expect to use methylene blue multiple times per week to daily for weeks to months in duration. For men, the sustainable and tolerable dose seems to be anywhere between 3 to 15 milligrams orally upon waking two times weekly to daily. And the deleterious dose um, seems to be over 25 milligrams orally based on anecdotal reports. For women, generally because their body weight is lower than men, the sustainable and tolerable dose is anywhere between 3 to 10 milligrams orally upon waking two times weekly to daily. And the deleterious dose would be, uh, based on anecdotal reports, over 15 milligrams daily. Uh, but based on the scientific evidence, that would be beyond 1 milligram per 1 kilogram body weight orally or sublingually daily, or beyond 0.5 milligrams per 1 kilogram body weight subcutaneous or intravenous daily and again um highly dependent on what else you're running alongside the methylene blue because there's a lot of drug interactions whether those are beneficial or deleterious so do additional research and compare the stack that you're currently on if that might have an overlapping or negative effect when you start combining that with methylene blue ideally you stick with oral methylene blue capsules from reputable sources to ensure that you get the highest possible quality of methylene blue with the highest purity at 99.99999% which is United States pharmacopoeia quality um, because there seems to be some risk of heavy metal contamination with non-USB grade methylene blue. Uh, so beware where you purchase your methylene blue from. It's not all the same and the quality might vary amongst the different methylene blue manufacturers. And if you do go with methylene blue powder and you get the highest possible quality you can find, then you need to dissolve one gram of methylene blue in 10 milliliters bacterial static water to get a 10% solution of methylene blue or one gram per 100 milliliter bacterial static water to get a 1% solution of methylene blue. You can dose the 10% solution with an insulin syringe. So you draw three IUs on the insulin syringe to get three milligrams methylene blue and 10 IUs on the insulin syringe to get 10 milligrams methylene blue. Now, unfortunately, uh, this high of a concentration doesn't pass through the needle of the insulin syringe. So you need to either backfill that by using a higher gauge to remove the plunger from the insulin syringe. And you draw from the sterile vial, uh, let's say 100 IUs or one milliliter containing uh, 100 milligrams methylene blue. Again, it's a 10% solution. Then you backfill that into the insulin syringe, and then you literally 
press down for as many IUs, aka milligrams of methylene blue you need. And if you go with the 1% solution, 10 milligrams methylene blue in one milliliter bacterial static water, then you need to draw the 30 IUs on the insulin syringe to get three milligrams methylene blue and to 100 IUs on the insulin syringe to get 10 milligrams methylene blue. Again, don't be an idiot and inject this 1% or 10% methylene blue solution subcutaneously or intravenously or interperitoneally or intercavernosously. Don't inject methylene blue, period. You use this insulin syringe to inject or drop the appropriate amount of methylene blue solution into a glass cup. Then you add more water. Then you take a straw. You stir that up until the solution is a homogenized blue and then you drink that through the straw bypassing your lips your tongue and your cheeks otherwise you would be stained for hours afterwards and then it's up to me to make a joke about it because trust me dude you're not ready for the smurf bj jokes or the navi bj jokes or the blue man group bj 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 jokes or the dr manhattan bj deep throats jokes i mean dr manhattan was well hung and you know it so uh, make sure you drink it with a straw, bypass any staining ability, uh, and otherwise go with the capsules. Because honestly, there's absolutely no reason to take the powdered form of methylene blue uh, when the capsules are readily available at three milligrams, five milligrams, or 10 milligram increments, which allow for any kind of milligram combination you could potentially be after. And even though methylene blue is not included in the World Anti-Doping Agency prohibited list, of 2025 you never know if they're going to add it next year because you can bet all of your testicles and your blue tongue that the world anti-doping agency is watching this youtube channel for potential performance enhancing drugs with uh, endurance enhancing benefits so here are the evidence-based detection times for now unfortunately it's never been assessed regarding a proper excretion study for doping analysis so the half-life i am aware of through intravenous administration uh, and oral administration, half-life is pretty much the same between five to six and a half hours. And with subcutaneous intramuscular and intraperitoneal administration, it's around 24 hours. Not entirely sure what an intercavernosal administration, uh, the half-life would be. Uh, I couldn't find that in the scientific evidence, unfortunately. So again, stick with oral administration because the half-life is five to six and a half hours. And that's reasonably easy to extrapolate a detection time from but it seems that all of the excretion studies are only lasting 24 hours and after a single serving of methylene blue at various dosages it's still detectable in urine for over 24 hours because the studies don't last that long so fortunately there's not much to go with yet but once WADA starts banning methylene blue potentially then there will be excretion studies regarding the metabolites and how long they are detectable in human urine or in human serum and then we can make an addendum video to make sure you guys keep beating those drug tests now i'd like to hear from you guys right down below in the comment section to fuel the algorithm obviously what was the highest dose of methylene blue you ever took how did you feel did you experience any side effects did you get serotonin syndrome or elevated blood pressure or impaired blood flow to the penis, making you lose your erection, right? Whatever silly story you have from a high dose methylene blue, let us know down below. I would love to hear about it. I've experienced zero side effects besides that one instance where I combined three milligrams methylene blue with 2.5 milligrams vortioxetine and I was on the couch for 24 hours um, uh, suffering through serotonin syndrome. It was not fun. That's the only uh, negative experience I've had on methylene blue. Um, and I've gone up to dosages of 10 milligrams every single day but usually i stick around 10 milligrams five times per week on workout days and then i rely on something like bromantane or another nootropic on my rest days right so i can cycle through my nootropics and have different kinds of effects on my productivity and i take a boatload of antioxidants all the way through so i think my antioxidant status and my mitochondrial function is significantly heightened whether i take methylene blue or not i've seen a good amount of blood work on guys that megadose methylene blue beyond 25 milligrams per day and it's very clear that their hematocrit comes down and their red blood cells come down even if they're taking erythropoietic compounds like a boldenone a prima bolin potentially or anadrol or again uh <laughs> they have sleep apnea um so you bring the methylene blue down and you give them a cpap machine and everything balances itself out like all good things should be do your blood work over at Merrick Health if you're thinking about running methylene blue so you can get a baseline analysis of your blood work parameters 
and they give you a little bit of an indication on where your starting dose should be. If you're worried about vasoconstriction and impaired pump, just buy yourself a tub of Gorilla Mode Nitric. I take it before every workout and my pumps are insane, even though I take 10 milligrams methylene blue upon waking. No diminished pumps have been observed while combining Gorilla Mode Nitric with methylene blue. And if you don't know where to get methylene blue, well, that's what the website is there for, rigorousteve.com, and you'll save yourself 10% wherever you might shop online. All right, Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A fully enhanced with methylene blue frontal bicep for you guys, large and in charge, nice skin texture, fully antioxidant status, raised to the max, and uh, nootropically enhanced for this entire deep dive. I hope you enjoyed it, as did I. Uh, it was a lot of work to prepare for and a lot of uh, stumbling over medical terminology, but hey, somebody has to do it, might as well be me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.